Good day and welcome to all of you. We're glad you applied to our fellowship training program and we're excited to have you interview with us. Let me start with a classic greeting of hello and welcome to Metro. Metro Health is an affiliate of Case Western Reserve University. Case was established in 1826 as a private research university. Metro Health has been affiliated with the university for more than a century. Metro is recognized for excellence in teaching at the medical school. All physicians hold faculty appointments at Case, and the fellows have an option to be appointed as clinical instructors at the university since they regularly interact with the medical students. Metro Health was founded in 1837 as City Hospital. Over the years, Metro went through significant expansion, and now Metro provides care at its main campus, at three mini hospitals, and at 20 outpatient health centers. The transformation continues as Metro is building a brand new hospital to replace the main inpatient campus. The new hospital, a state-of-the-art building, is almost completed and will start receiving patients at the end of October of this year. Here are two QR codes to two web links. The code to the left links to a live camera that overlooks the construction site of the building. The code on the right links to a virtual YouTube tour of the facilities. As a public healthcare system, Metro Health serves as the primary safety net hospital for the residents of the city of Cleveland and of Cuyahoga County. In 1982, Metro Life Flight Air Ambulance Service was established and over almost 20 years has gone through more than 90,000 medical missions, all completed safely. Metro Health is home to Cuyahoga County's most experienced Level 1 Adult Trauma Center, operating as such since 1992. Metro has the only tuberculosis center in Northeast Ohio. And Metro is home to the Rehabilitation Institute, which is one of only 14 federally designated spinal cord injury model systems in the U.S. and is the top rehab institute in Ohio. At Metro, we use EPIC electronic medical record system for inpatient and outpatient services. We have been using EPIC for more than 20 years. Metro Health hosts 47 training programs and 10 of these programs are internal medicine residencies and fellowships. The link on the left will take you to the website of the GME office at Metro. There, you will find information about our programs and the onboarding process, including salary and benefits information. On the GME website, you will find videos such as the one on the top right describing our commitment to education, service, and discovery. The middle video is a virtual tour of our training program in pulmonary and critical care. On this video, you get to meet some of us you can see what a typical day looks like and take a tour of the current facilities where we teach and learn. The lower right video is a message from the program director, division chief, and our most recent chief fellow describing the program structure and the teaching curriculum. Our division of pulmonary and critical care medicine has 15 faculty members and we're expanding. Within our practice, we cover all aspects of pulmonary critical care and sleep medicine. Because we're not a lung transplant center, we refer these patients out when it's time to get them listed. On the top left is Autumn Hepler Franco, our program coordinator. Autumn has a master's degree from Baldwin Wallace University in Cleveland. You have already met her. The rest of the individuals are our faculty members. Our faculty come from different backgrounds and span multiple areas of interest. First off, Ted Warren, our chief. He trained at Case University Hospitals and his interest is in pulmonary physiology. Dennis Ockley, he is the prior training program director and the current director of the Sleep Center. He trained at the University of New Mexico. Vidya Krishnan, is the Vice Chair of Academic Affairs at the Department of Medicine. She's also one of the fellowship advisors. She trained at Johns Hopkins. Faiza Khalid is a new member to the division. She was the Chief Fellow last year and is passionate about medical education. Daryl Thornton is our upcoming Chief to start in this position in October. He trained at the University of Washington 
He is the co-director of the Center for Reducing Health Disparities and is interested in population health and critical illness outcomes research. Ismini Koroni is the director of Lung Cancer Diagnostic and the Medical ICU. She trained at ICANN Sinai in New York. She is one of the fellowship advisors. John Carter is a pediatric neurologist who trained in sleep medicine at the University of Washington. He is the co-director of Sleep Center and teaches sleep medicine topics to the pulmonary fellows. Ed Sivak trained at Oklahoma City University and is the past chief of pulmonary at Upstate Medical University in Syracuse. He staffs many of the outpatient clinics with the fellows. Yasser Tarabishi trained at UCLA and is the Associate Director of Clinical Informatics at Metro. His research interest is obviously in clinical informatics. Mirna Ayash is the Director of the PFT Lab and the Asthma Clinic. She trained at Case University Hospitals. Arvind Sugunas is the Director of Bronchoscopy. He plans the medical education curriculum for the training program. He is also a fellowship advisor. He trained at MedStar in Washington, D.C. Mike Enfeld trained at Case University Hospitals. He directs the step-down unit and is interested in cystic fibrosis and bronchiectasis. Chloe Castro trained at Metro. She is the Associate Program Director. She is interested in muscular dystrophy and medical education. Chandula Senerevatni is the newest member of the division. She trained at the University of Toledo and is interested in lung cancer. And myself, Ziad Shaman, I'm the program director. I trained at Metro and I'm interested in point of care ultrasound and in medical education. We have nine fellows in our program and we enroll three per year. Like the faculty, fellows come from diverse backgrounds and have different interests. Currently, we have Zara Zia, graduated from Aga Khan University in Pakistan and trained at Indiana University. Irina Bodner went to school at Northeast Ohio University and trained at Metro. Liz Verghese studied at Amrita School of Medicine in India and trained at Akron General Hospital in Ohio. Shoji Shimizu went to school in Japan at Mie University and did residency at Metro. Fadi Aldagawi graduated from the University of Aleppo in Syria and trained at Weiss Memorial Hospital in Chicago. John Dolorosa went to school at the University of South Florida and trained at Lehigh Valley in Pennsylvania. Nirja Desai studied at St. George's University and trained at MedStar in Washington, D.C. Namir Al Yusuf went to St. Martinus and did his training at the University of Pittsburgh. And finally, we have Joe Tonelli, who graduated from Northeast Ohio University and trained here with us at MetroHealth. Our rotation schedule distribution is shown here in one-week blocks. Note that the MICU rotation is well distributed throughout the training years. Night blocks in the MICU occur more often in the first year, and then it eases off in second and third years. Consults and procedures rotations are more common in the first year, so that there is more research and elective time in later years. And of course, there are the usual four weeks of vacation, plus time you can use from research for national conferences and courses. Overall, there are nine months of research and five months of electives during the training time. Our program stands out in multiple areas. One of these areas is good old patient care. All admitted patients are service patients and none are private. Although there are consultants that help with their areas of expertise, the final decisions are with the team caring for the patient. Our clinical experience is wide in variety. As a county hospital, we take care of patients at all levels of acuity. We do many of the ICU procedures ourselves, including central venous lines, arterial lines, thoracentesis, paracentesis, lumbar punctures, most of the intubations, chest tube placements, right heart catheter insertions, and of course, bronchoscopies. For example, 
Here is a picture of Faisal Kadir, one of our prior fellows with Dr. Krishnan during a pulmonary artery catheter insertion in the MICU. The fellows are assigned mentors at the start of training and are encouraged to meet with their mentors regularly to go over evaluations, milestones, scholarship, and future plans. While a mentor may not be able to support everything a fellow wants to do, the mentor is the fellow's advocate and guide. The mentor will recruit others to help in areas outside of their expertise. We have a lung cancer diagnostic program with the usual bronchoscopy, EBUS, radial EBUS, and pleural procedures. Each lung cancer case is discussed at a multidisciplinary board where the fellows participate. For experience in lung transplant and in navigational and robotic bronchoscopy, elective time is arranged at regional ins institutions during the senior year of training for those interested in such fields. Fellows have a wide continuum of options for scholarly activity, including traditional research, quality assurance, and improvement, educational projects, personal professional development, and soon to add leadership training options through immersive experience into the administration of healthcare at the institutional level. Actually, during training time, fellows are at liberty to choose from many scholarship options. The options include creation of knowledge, dissemination of knowledge, and personal professional development. Each option carries a certain number of points. The points are directly related to the time demand of the project and the avenue of exposure. Other than a minimum number of points that fellows need to meet, the choice of scholarship is per fellow preference. When we switched to this new model, which we call PASS Pass, our academic scholarship increased by 50%. When we shared our findings at the ATS in 2014, we received an innovation award for the project. Metro's Simulation Institute is very supportive of our educational activities. We have a bronchoscopy simulator, an ultrasound simulator, high fidelity task trainers for airway management, among many other tools to enhance education. We also utilize standardized patients for simulating scenarios and cadaver lab for surgical procedural training. One of our newest creations is an escape room style educational game that uses simulation for medical learning and for team building. For that, in 2021, the ADS awarded our program another innovation award for mixing gameplay with learning, serving both as an educational activity as well as a wellness activity. Our educational systems work. We've had 100% pulmonary and critical care boards pass rate over the past 20 years. A third of our graduates have taken the critical care echo boards and they all passed the exam. A third of our graduates have gone to more training, some in sleep medicine and others in lung transplant and in IP. Overall, more than 50% of our fellows have chosen academic careers after graduation. Many of the fellows are influenced by our collaboration with neighboring institutions and by our regional and national involvement in societies. For example, we have a regional ultrasound course that we offer every year in July for incoming fellows from Metro, University Hospitals, the Cleveland Clinic, and the Ohio State University programs. We alternate venues between Metro and the Cleveland Clinic, and we get the fellows through a hands-on didactic program for a head start in the area of point-of-care ultrasound. We are involved in national societies such as the American Thoracic Society and the American College of Chest Physicians. For example, here is the list of Metro faculty and fellows who contributed in the ATS review for the pulmonary boards. One of the book editors, Sonny Kosa, was one of our fellows when the book was being written a couple years ago. Several of our graduates hold positions at sections and assemblies at the national societies. We do all of that and we make it look like fun. While we have dedicated wellness activities about every other month, the plan is to connect outside of work too. While winning major awards at Metro, at Case University, and nationally, such as winning the first place at the ACCP Challenge in 2020. Most importantly, we take care of each other. We enjoy the times when it's nice outside, and even during the six months of Cleveland winter, we still manage to find climate-controlled environments where we can have a good time. Thank you for being here, and thank you for spending time with us. Welcome to Metro and we hope to see you next year at our new home.